Hey, what's up? And welcome back to How to Make a Face Wash for Beginners, Part 2. We're going to be taking a look at four different face washes for four different skin types. Each of these use a different thickener, and each of them use a different surfactant or combination of surfactants that I think is best for its corresponding skin type. But of course, everything is, for the most part, interchangeable. Um, it's up to you what you prefer. This is just what I like, so let's get into it. So first, let's make the Cucumber Facial Cleanser. This one is formulated for dry, sensitive skin. I chose Xanthan Gum for this face wash because it does create more of a creamy face wash, which is typically favored by those with dry, sensitive skin. It is formulated with Cucumber Hydrosol and Cucumber Extract for the soothing properties. And I used a more mild surfactant at a lower percentage to keep it more gentle. And we're making a 100 gram batch of this face wash along with all the other face washes. So if you watched part one to this video, which if you didn't, I recommend it. Link will be down in the description box. Um, you'll be familiar with Xanthan Gum. And this is specifically Xanthan Gum Soft. We talked about a few different Xanthan Gums, but this one is by far my favorite. So we're going to be using this as the thickener for this face wash. So the next ingredient we're adding in is some glycerin. Now this is a humectant that draws moisture to the skin to help hydrate it. So this is a great ingredient for really any product you're making. So the reason you want to add the glycerin and xanthan gum together first is because the glycerin will actually help disperse the xanthan gum more evenly throughout the face wash. If you don't do this, your xanthan gum might create these things called fish eyes which is essentially just the xanthan gum clumping up in your face wash. So I always recommend mixing your xanthan gum with some glycerin at first. So let's set this to the side and let's work on phase B. So I'm gonna add in my distilled water and then I'm gonna be using some cucumber hydrosol, which caters to the story of this product and it also helps soothe the skin as well. And this will add some natural cucumber scent to the face wash. Now for some cucumber extract. And again, this will help cater to the story of the face wash, but this also is soothing to the skin. 0.5 grams of Liquid Dermal Plus, which is the preservative. And lastly for phase B, we have Plantapone LGC Sorb. This is a cleansing surfactant. I talked all about it in parts one, so go watch that. And since this is a cucumber face wash, I figured we would add in some green mica powder. And you don't really have to measure, just eyeball it. And it always does better mixing it into phase A first, so it hydrates in the glycerin with the xanthan gum. All I need to do is simply pour phase B into phase A. So if you watched the last video in my Formulating for Beginner series, you would know how important it is to check and balance the pH of your products, which is what I'm going to be doing here and what I'm going to be doing at the end of each of these face washes. So if you don't understand how to check and balance the pH, go watch that video. That way you can make sure the pH is balanced in all of your products because that's super, super important when taking care of your skin and formulating proper products that work well. So it looks like if you follow this exact recipe for this cucumber face wash, of course it can depend on where you purchase your ingredients, but it should come out right around 5.5. So what I always recommend doing when you're making anything that has lather and foam to it, um, you want to cover it and let it sit until the next morning, and then you can package it up into your bottle then, because as of right now, it's a little poofier than it will be tomorrow, so it'll fit much better into your bottle tomorrow. And here's what we're working with. Definitely thickened up a lot. And the thing that I've noticed when making face washes with xanthan gum is they might appear a little bit like chunky like that at first, but after they sit for a couple days, they always become a lot more smooth. So you can even get away with using 1% if you want it to be a bit thinner. Now let's go ahead and make this apple cider vinegar facial cleanser. This one is formulated for oily acne prone skin. I formulated this with Crothix because it makes more of a like gel and that has a much better sensory feel on the skin for those with oily skin. I used a stronger surfactant system in this product and at a higher percentage so it has more cleansing and it can strip the skin more of all the oils to make your skin feel more clean. And I chose ingredients like apple cider vinegar extract which is great for those with oily skin. So I'm gonna start with the distilled water. 
and then some linen hydrosol which is great for oily acne prone skin and then some glycerin and just because you may have oily skin it doesn't mean you don't need hydration in your skincare routine and then some apple cider vinegar which is great for treating troubled skin and it can even help dry out overactive sebaceous glands and then the preservative which i'm using liquid dermal plus again and now it's time for the surfactants I'm using some AOS 40. This is a really good anionic surfactant. It does a great job at cleansing and ridding the skin of oil and dirt. And then cocoa betaine, which is a great foam booster. I talked about both of these cleansing surfactants in the part one of this video. And now it's time for the thickener. I'm using Crothix. I talked all about this in part one. And this is a super easy thickener to use. Just add it right in to your final formulation. Sometimes it does help to heat it. In this case, mine is pretty good, but if it's really cold in the room you're formulating in, you might need to heat it up. Um, sometimes you even find better results mixing it with your surfactants first, but in this formula, it's actually perfect to just add it right in at the end. And if your Crothix like chunks up, I promise just keep mixing it or even just let it sit for a couple hours and it'll all just fully incorporate at some point. It just might take a minute. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and check the pH and it's a little high, so I'm gonna go ahead and lower it. All right, and with just three drops of my buffer solution, I got it down to 4.94. And again, just like the rest of these formulations, you just want to cover it and let it sit until tomorrow. Look at how clear that is. So much of it settles if you just let it sit overnight. And now we have the coconut milk cleanser, which is mainly just a conditioning cleanser. Since it's made with Garacat, it has this really nice slip and glide to it. Garacat is the thickener, and it just leaves your skin feeling very, very conditioned and soft. And then the coconut milk is also very hydrating for the skin. So it's great for anybody just looking for a basic cleanse, but also a lot of hydration at the same time. I'm gonna start with distilled water. Then of course we need some glycerin, some coconut milk extract. Coconut milk extract just does a wonderful job at moisturizing, hydrating, softening the skin. So I think this is great for any skin type. And then some oat protein, which helps soften and condition the skin. Now again with the preservative, I'm using Liquid Dermal Plus. This is such an easy preservative to use. I recommend it for all the beginners out there. And then we're going to be using some Garacat or a cationic gum. It has a few different names. And this is going to be used to help thicken the face wash. This has conditioning properties, but it has such a lovely feel on the skin. It really just makes your skin feel really soft and moisturized, hydrated. So love this stuff. Now this may not thicken your face wash immediately because this is pH dependent. I talked all about this in my last video, but... Garacab will only thicken in a pH of seven and below. So we may have to lower the pH before we see any thickening happening. We need some AOS 40, which again is the cleansing surfactant. I talked all about it in my last video. And then some cocomandopril betaine. So the natural pH of this face wash is at 6.92. So this is why it's not thickening too much naturally. So we got the pH right at 5.41 with only three drops of my pH buffer solution. And lastly, we have the watermelon cleanser, which has more of an emulsion consistency to it because it is an emulsion, but it's very creamy-like and very hydrating on the skin, which is perfect for mature skin. And it's formulated with watermelon extract and watermelon oil, which is great for mature skin. And I'm starting with the distilled water and then some glycerin for hydration and then watermelon extract. Watermelon extract is high in antioxidants and it can help minimize the appearance of fine lines, wrinkles, and dark spots. And then the last thing we're adding to phase A is our preservative and I'm using Liquid Dermal Plus again. So our thickener for this face wash is Cephamaxin and this can actually help emulsify 
up to 25% oils. So first what you want to do with Cephamaxin is hydrate it into the water phase first. And you do this by just sprinkling it over top of the water phase and then you want to let it sit for eight hours. And as you can see, it's super jelly on the top. Just go ahead and mix everything together. And once everything is mixed, we can go ahead and add in the watermelon oil. And watermelon seed oil has moisturizing, regenerating, and restructuring properties. Now it's time to add the surfactants. Here I have some foaming apple, which is an anionic surfactant, and it's a really gentle in mild anionic surfactant. And then some cocoa glucoside, which is a non-ionic cleansing surfactant, and it's really gentle, but it does have a high pH. So you really need to be aware of that when you're using cocoa glucoside. So now what I wanna to do to make this face wash more fun is add in some pink mica powder. All right, now it's time to check and balance the pH. And as you can see, the pH is a bit too high, so let's go ahead and lower the pH. So with about seven drops, I got it down to 4.89. So with this one that we just made, compared to the one I made a couple days ago, you can see that this one still has like bubbles in it and maybe some foam and lather, and you can see exactly how thick it is. After you let it sit for about a day, it does thin out a lot. This one is actually much, much thinner, and all the bubbles and foam has gone away, so just keep that in mind. Once you let it sit, it does change viscosity a bit. See, this one is so much thinner than the one we just made. So I do hope you guys enjoyed this look at a few different face washes you can make. Of course, there are millions and millions of different formulations you guys can make. This is just a small example. I just wanted to show you guys how to use different thickeners and how to use different surfactants. With all of that said, that's about it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Later. Someone to listen